Hi, welcome to Termite Machine Works and my name is Keith. Today I'm going to do a uh, video uh, slideshow um, uh, presentation uh, uh, and this was uh, inspired by uh, Doug with SubmarineBoats.com. Uh, we got onto the subject of uh, mass, uh, sailboat mass, steel mass, and, um, and I uh, uh, got into the conversation of the mass that I built for the Lorenda. And, uh, and he commented on them, and, uh, and I opened up my mouth and, uh, and, and said, uh, hey, I'll put together a, a, a video and, uh, and kind of show you uh, uh, how I built the mass for Lorenda. Um, two key components that I came up with, and of course I was an amateur uh, uh, at building mass, uh, steel mass when I uh, started. Um, and like any other project you've taken on that you haven't done before, you are an amateur. Uh, you, you know, hopefully by the time you get done with it, uh, you, you're an expert on that particular subject. Uh, um, two things that that uh, really made the job uh, uh, come out the way it did was one uh, set of rings. I made uh, uh, one for the large mast and one for the small mast. Uh, the large mast, I tapered 18 lineal foot of the mast, and uh, on the small one, I think uh, it was about 14 foot of uh, taper. And so I drilled a set of holes in the ring here uh, to hold and clamp my piano wire. And these cord dimensions are what I needed to remove the material, bring the material that's left back together and then weld and stitch it back together. These set screws or the square head screws here came in and they touched the mass and I was able to align these rings and set the rotation of these rings uh, all while I was setting them up and you know that gave me the full motion of the rings itself and and how I set them up. Uh, the other hole that came in here was a set screw um, and then there, there was a series of holes in here that didn't need to have set screws because I was running a wire in, around, and back out the other direction. The other, the other item that I built was a simple set of rollers. And I happen to have two that I've, I've hung on to and they come in handy here in the shop for a lot of other things. Here I'm going to be doing something on the stainless steel muffler, but that's not what this is about. Uh, I just have them set here to show you that uh, they are uh, a very useful tool and I spun the mast on these and as I worked it every step of the way you do a little weld here and roll it I'd have indicators out on the mast and uh, that's how I was able to maintain the trueness of, of my mast. These wheels are actually the um, trailer jack wheels. Now I, uh, I did take and turn the outside of the plastic wheel and machine the inside of a, a piece of pipe and I press fit them on there so that I had a surface that wouldn't take a set uh, with the weight for a period of time. Here's a close up of those uh, trailer jack wheels and you know no more than plastic and they, they, they held up the load I mean shoot they're still alive now and this is uh, 15 years later. I'll just I cut off that slug that uh, was on the bottom of them, rosette walled it in, in here, piece of 5 inch channel, piece of 2 inch angle. A very simple design. Uh, don't need to spend a lot of money on that, that's for sure. The first photo is uh, the, the pipes when they first arrive at the, uh, at the yard and they're laid out there and uh, the, the larger of the two masts, you can see at the very far end of it, uh, the second section that will be added together. Next photo here actually shows the butt joint, uh, the sleeve inside the pipe, and my rosette weld uh, cutouts where I'm going to join the two pieces together. This picture here is, is a uh, opening, clean out opening, 
and you can see the lower uh, clean out uh, elbow sweeping out to the opening there getting ready to add on the threaded uh, cap or plug. Alright, you got the, uh, the, the plug is, uh, is in the receiver there and you can see the four lugs um, that are welded they're drilled and tapped and I made a square base that actually sets down into the bottom of the keel area and is securely anchored into there and then this mass will slip down into there and the four bolts I think they're one inch uh, bolts that actually bolted the base of the mass down and you can see in on the pipe and you see the three standoffs and I have a series of those going up the, the exhaust itself went partially up into the mast and it was held to the side walls uh, with those three uh, plugs. Here's a, uh, another picture of the bottom there and the, the plug is out and uh, it, you know, it's more of the same. Wait for an air compressor here. Okay, this, uh, this picture here is the uh, uh, area where the exhaust is actually connected to the pipe inside from uh, the external section and it's the cutaway where the flange will set uh, for the exhaust. Here's a finished picture of the exhaust uh, connection that uh, is where the exhaust comes off the engine and bolts directly to the mast. Here's an end view of uh, the start of cutting the materials out and uh, you can see that I staggered them around and, uh, and I spread them out so I'm uniform. All the cutaway on the mast itself was um, I did with a torch. I didn't have plasma cutting at that time. Next picture here we're, uh, we're looking at uh, the large one with the cutouts and the small mast and uh, you can see uh, piano wire uh, ends all, all around and you can see how I pulled the wires through and then I tightened the individual set screws here onto uh, the, the piano wire and created those stiff hard uh, lines. Then I took a, a center punch, uh, a marker and a center punch and I clearly marked those uh, lines so that if we had rain, rust build up and things like that um, and you don't know how many wires uh, I, I ended up breaking on this thing, sparks grinding and, uh, and tripping over uh, you know it, a lot of different <laughs> the wires can't stay up there forever also piano wire rusts just as fast as the mast does another end shot uh, progressing a little bit farther on the, uh, the cutting The small mast in this picture, uh, I've fully uh, got it ready to start separating those little tiny sections that I got in between my major cutouts and it's ready to start bringing down and closing it down. Back to when the, the larger mast uh, was completely cut away and halfway between those these two rings here you can see a section where there's studs all in a line coming out and that's because I made an inner ring at the proper circumference of that distance up into the taper and that was my first support and I, I, I tightened and manipulated the mass to run, I'd spin it indicator at that point and and that was my start of actually holding the individual cut out uh, fingers uh, in line and then I started to do my tack fit up. This next picture here is the large mass 
and you can see the tacks and those tacks are about one tack uh, lineal length of, of a foot between tacks and the cap is tacked onto the end of it. Looking from the other angle, same, uh, same uh, picture. After both masts were tapered, um, I built the collars to uh, hold the rigging at the top of each mast. And you can also see the exhaust ports uh, were added at this time. Okay, here's a close-up of the exhaust port on, uh, I believe it's a small mast there. Larry uh, had the mast picked up and then moved over to his yard and, um, and then he proceeded to uh, sandblast them there. And he borrowed uh, my rollers because, uh, you know, hey, it's, it's a nice tool and uh, he sandblasted them right on there. And you can see you just take a, uh, a long bolt and uh, screw them into the uh, 3 8 threads here and uh, you know they're like spokes on a, on a helm wheel. Next picture here is Larry standing by uh, the mass and he's, he's uh, painting them and uh, you know Larry was one man that would truly give me a worthy job meaning I would use my talents to the fullest to meet the challenges that uh, Larry would give me. Um, Larry took his own life and I had a hard time dealing with that. Uh, we'll move on. Here's an end view, uh, one of the better shots uh, right over the top of the cap, uh, staring down, and, and Larry's rolling on the paint job. And my last picture, uh, this is uh, really like a Christmas card, and uh, we get them all, all the time, and uh, he would keep us tuned in uh, wherever him and uh, Marlene were uh, traveling around to. And it says, uh, Schooner Lorenda, Central Wharf, Salem, Mass. Awaiting rendezvous, sail with USS Constellation off uh, Marblehead, Mass. Happy Holidays, Marlene and Larry. Well, I hope I, uh, I did uh, the pictures justice to, uh, in... Uh, I hope that's a little insight there, uh, Doug. Um, the pictures of Lorenda and, uh, and these pictures and the rest of my collection, I will start bringing them out and I'll be putting them in my website. And uh, uh, they've been sleeping long enough and, uh, and there's an enormous amount of, of uh, work that I've done on the Lorenda. I think back then, my shop rate was about 40 bucks an hour. <laughs> Remember that? Um, and all total, I think I figured between seventy-five and a hundred thousand dollars worth of work I did on the Lorenda. Uh, and I have a, a collection of pictures to show my talents and and the things that Larry uh, had me do. And uh, so. We'll get that going. And uh, thank you for the visit. Bye.